All righty. Well, <laughs> we're live now. Okay. I feel like this might be a little low. Yeah. Like it might need to be like right here, but then it might be in front of my face. I guess this is fine, right? Yeah, just it's probably fine. Into it. Yeah, yeah. Just be like relatively into it. Okay, cool. So this welcome to the name of the podcast is Show and Tell. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Welcome. I was trying to think of a talent if I had one, but a I guess talent? I don't. No, you have many talents. Well, first... I do, but not one I can just like do sitting down. Okay. Do you have a pole in here? I don't really <laughs> have much of anything You've got a else. C-stand. <laughs> oh, God. Um. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just going to say welcome to the to the podcast. So thank you, thank you can you. introduce yourself if you'd like. Hi, I'm Leslie um, from Texas. I've known Alex since I first moved here, probably like just a few months into moving to LA mm -hmm. and that was like 2019 so like I know it's what, been a long so I actually years? earlier today when I was trying to think of like interesting topics I was trying to think how did we actually meet mm. like I know when you came into my life I but I can't remember the, meeting you the first day I met Alex um I was invited to Saddle Ranch it was my first time at Saddle Ranch ever and it was a karaoke night that's, back that when sounds pretty that sounds pretty accurate back when saddle ranch was like really cool to go to before it got ruined by um all the tiktokers during covid so this was like pre-covid okay and um i got invited by some of your friends and then i didn't talk to you until i saw you singing and you ran and jumped on the electric bull and you were sing singing some early 2000s-esque song. Like all the small Sli things or something. Yeah, yeah. Sliding on your knees, uh, air guitars, uh, all that jazz. <laughs> so <laughs> that is how I met Alex. And I was like, yeah, we're going to be I think my knees are still friends. fucked up from that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were like roommates with my friend. So that's how I met oh, you. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's it. <laughs> That's really, I had no idea it was Saddle Ranch. I it love that Saddle though Ranch. because that's like so me. Yeah. Like I, there could be a possibility that we may have previously met before, but it would have been like, like probably at like a party or something like super quickly, but I can't like my first memory of you is at Saddle Ranch okay, singing. And I would just remember being like, that's so cool because I just moved to LA and it was like, tonight's actually karaoke night. Is it really? Yeah. God, couldn't catch me out. I just, I just hit quads at the gym. My legs you know, you know, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff who? Like Saddle Ranch, Jeff. No, I'm really bad at names. I'm like uh, a he's like the, I think he's like the general manager. Or something oh like that. yes, yes. But I do. me and him are, are are cool. But like he's been hitting me up. He's like, you got to come throw a show at karaoke. He just calls me blue hair girl, and so without the blue hair, I don't think he'll remember me because whenever I was like living two houses behind, Saddle does that Ranch, happen often? Like people not recognize you because your all hair's the time. always changing. Every time I've changed my color, people yeah. For reference, themselves to me. It, Leslie's had like a million different hair colors. Insert all the pictures of my hair that I was. But the blue living. hair, I would say, was like a staple. The blue hair hung around it was, for a while. It was the longest one. I was a L'Oreal model, and they dyed my hair like this crazy blue color is that, that how it the, started that was the darkest blue i literally had an appointment for two weeks later to just strip it all out of my hair and just make me like bleach blonde again like i had never dyed my hair like a crazy color or anything i had no desire to I was terrified but i just moved to la um i thought it was a cool opportunity they also only paid me like two grand but at the time i was like super broke so i was like yeah yeah i, I had no idea that's super cool i remember posting a tweet that was like I just let L'Oreal destroy my hair for two thousand dollars. I mean, I probably would have like, done the same thing. As right? a girl, it's worse though, huh? Because that, that shit, shit takes way more time. I had never dyed my hair. I had no sense of style. I barely knew how to do my makeup. I didn't really know how to do anything. Wait, so you were like just year. a blonde before this? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I guess do it. Like it was through my management and stuff, and I was like, oh, this will be cool. Like I'll be on like a hair color box and like yeah, do this whole shoot for L'Oreal, which was like the worst day of my life because. Whenever I went to the shoot for them to do my, my hair and stuff, they, like, gave me a blue fro. And the girl that was doing my makeup just kept saying that she wasn't a makeup artist and didn't know what to do. And they did my makeup so terribly. And then the whole shoot, they just wanted me to look sad because the color was called, what was it called? Tragic. And so okay. it was supposed to be a different color for, like, every type of mood and okay. so they had like a yellow like every person that they chose to to have that color had that color of eyes so there was a girl that had like these mint green eyes and her hair was mint green and then 
I got chosen because my eyes were really blue. So then they dyed my hair the same color as my eyes. Okay. And so that was kind of like the theme of things. That's cool though. It was really sick. The pictures were horrible. My family bullied me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, the fuck is this? And I was like, hmm. I was like, I told so many people and then I like just never posted it. And, and people were like, where are the pictures? And I'm like, I refuse. I refuse to show anybody. They really aren't that. It was terrible. How did they turn out? So I was like, like, how, how is this such like a big brand, but they couldn't. That's what I'm thinking. I would have rather just done my own makeup. Like, I wasn't a makeup artist. I didn't really have any makeup skills, but it would have been a lot better than what you the have girl them on did. your phone. No, 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 I don't even have them on my phone. I didn't even save them. I've never looked at them since the no day that, way. that I saw them. I've, I have had photos like that, though. Oh, probably not worse? like with crazy blue hair, but like just photos where like even you look at once and I'm like, I never want to see these every. Again. OK, so you think that hair modeling is going to be like the actual L'Oreal ones where it's just a like a blowout and it's just your natural hair and it's just blowing and you're just like natural and beautiful and sexy. No, every time I've been brought into hair modeling, they do some wild shit to my hair that makes me want to cry and do the worst makeup ever on me. And I don't know why that's a recurring thing. The last time I did a hair modeling thing was for the hair salon that I go to the most. And um, like, I love them to death. They like do really good hair for me all the time. And this wasn't my hairdresser that did this. It was the owner of the salon. And he like does Katy Perry's hair and like all these, all these like famous people that come into the salon and stuff, right? But they wanted to shoot like headshots that they were going to blow up to these giant portraits that I had seen um, in their salon before. So I was so excited to do it because they had all these other great pictures. Well, the day they did my hair, they did it super kinky curly. Again, I'm like, the fuck? Why <laughs> You're like, give people? me something normal. Right? It was so like the hair wouldn't have been as bad if the makeup, the woman overlined my lips so much. Like, bro, I already have lip filler. The fuck are you like making me <laughs> look like Ronald McDonald for? She overlined Ronald it so much. McDonald's. And then she put on two pairs of fake eyelashes on me. It literally looked like somebody stretched my face like this because like with makeup, you can like contour your face. Like you can literally give yourself you can literally give yourself a whole different shape of a face. I know that y'all see it on TikTok and stuff. Yeah, for but, sure. Like my face looked so aged and she put so much heavy makeup on me and it was just like I hated it. And then they were like, "Why don't you post these pictures?" and I was like, "Because they're so like the pictures itself were like quality photos, right? But my mm-hmm. hair and my makeup were so just so shit. it was like presented. It was just like, oh, God damn, can yeah. y'all just like let me style this? Like, yeah, made me so mad. No, I, I've had that though. Like, I, I know it's totally different, but when I've shot like music videos and stuff, I've mm. had different makeup artists and it's uh, maybe this is like ignorant to say, but to me, I've been like mind blown how some people not all of them so if somebody's done my makeup they're watching this <laughs> but no but like so many people have done my makeup and i've been like how do you think this looks good <laughs> right no it's happened to me so many times uh i remember whenever i first moved to la i had really 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 bad like cystic acne okay which that wasn't their fault however they fully did my makeup and the makeup was so bad and then so you add the terrible makeup on top of my cystic acne after they finished my hair and makeup they were like sorry like we're just not gonna shoot you like it just like your acne changed the shape of your face and I was like yeah but I could have fixed this like it wasn't it wasn't that terrible okay the makeup was bad like they put this really cheesy pink lipstick on me that like wasn't even lined appropriately like I've had my makeup done by really good people and also like I'm not somebody that requires a lot of makeup so I, like whenever you're putting fake Subtle lashes flex. on me and there's like skin that you can see in between it because you don't know how to do it like that wasn't my fault but like I remember that hurt me to my core for like years thinking that it was my fault and now that I've like now that I kind of know and I set up photo shoots myself and stuff now for like that fashion brand that I work for it I was like damn that was you guys and y'all made me feel like it was me like if you can't cover up a pimple like I just you should just get a different job yeah and off in the industry yeah like it really is shocking like i've had a lot of really bad makeup jobs done but now i know to just sneak off to the bathroom and take off whatever i think looks terrible yeah and fix it myself so i just bring my and i want to make back. it clear i'm not like shading makeup artists like makeup are artists are ma- incredible are and talented clearly amazing it just blows me away there. like the like 
a lack of awareness with like I don't know if it's like a lack of preparedness and like they don't have the right well, skin just tones are... to match because like I'm not super familiar with that stuff but like it's the same thing I've had a lot music. of bad makeup there are a lot done. of music artists out there that are not amazing music artists just like there's a bunch of people in every profession yeah that suck there are a lot of fitness trainers that don't know how to train yeah there are you know th there's there's going to be sucky people and all of it, you know, yeah. but there's clearly amazing people in it. That's why it's a job. Yeah. So speaking yeah. of fitness, yep. <laughs> we just, uh, we just lifted the other day. Yes. He made me do a million lunges. Yeah. But that's why my quads look so beautiful right now. Now we did a pretty solid leg workout. Yes. And you kept up the whole time. I did. Made you do five sets of lunges. Yeah, bro. And then uh, you kicked my ass on the abs. I was holding my own on the leg raises. Yes. And then we got to like the floor stuff, like time under tension. And I was like, you will just never be a retired. See, gymnast remember when I showed you the 30, 30, 30? <laughs> I thought I got you for a second. You know, you did like 30 flat, 30 angled. And 30... that one was tough. See, I thought I got you. I was like, ah, I and got the I upper like, edge. I thought I had the, I thought I had the edge. And then you were like, oh, let's do another five minutes. <laughs> I... I love core. I love core. Right now I'm I'm in a bulk and I'm trying to just like build up the muscle so that whenever I cut there's going to be like those like blocks there. Yeah. Because I just hate already being like I'm a skinny fit girl, you know, like like I I could just not work out and just be skinny. Mm -hmm. And I hate that because there's so many people that look at my page and just think it's just genetics. And so I kind of took a step back from posting like I would my, say it's just genetics, though. It's, like, it's, it's, like, it's easy I'm to think that. I'm little because my genetics, but, like, but if the you muscle I'm putting on is not genetic. If you weren't somewhat responsible with the way you eat, like, you wouldn't look the way you do. I don't gain weight. I have to, like, actively try to gain weight. Gain so really so I would just be, like, whenever I first moved to LA, like, I was always active. But in yeah. the last few years, I was, like, not active at all. Yeah. And just restarted my fitness journey in like last January. So, so like a year and like a couple months now, but there was like two years where I wasn't doing anything active yeah. whatsoever. And I was still skinny mini. You could still see lines in my stomach, but that's why like I'm really prioritizing this bulk right now because I want people to see the definition in my body. Like I, like I really want the muscle to be there yeah like i don't want to just be tiny and toned like i really yeah. really want the muscle um i think a lot of that is stemming from the fact that like i've been on social media for years now and so many people think i'm just like not talented or like that i don't really have anything to offer and i don't work for anything and my life is just so easy and whatever and a lot of that is how i present myself online because i do keep a lot of like my personal life personal mm -hmm. and just do photo shoots and whatever and like i think it's super easy to show like the fun things versus like it's, for me it's really hard to like I, I don't even know how i would structure content about struggles in my life other than the stuff about adhd because that is just a part of my everyday life and will mm -hmm. always be a part of my everyday life yeah so i don't know if you go through this but sometimes i i think about like oh like maybe i should share this but then part of me is like do I really just want to like air my baggage all out over the world? Yeah, I feel and then, so And then I'm like, sometimes. but what if it can help somebody? And then I'm like, but what if I'm posting this like subconsciously for attention? Like I literally can't get those no, things yeah. out of my head. I've tried to like talk about the issues with my mom online and like I just can never figure out a way to do it. I cried one time on my story. And then I cringed so hard five minutes later because like my emotions bounce so quickly. You delete all the stories? I was like, ew, why <laughs> did I do that? Like there are people that I see actively crying all the time. Like it would be weird if I didn't see them cry. <laughs> no, I know those you know? people. I know, I know those people. you probably know exactly who I'm talking about. Like always posting like crying pictures and stuff like that. And I'm like, first of all, like I, I just... I, I just, I don't know. It just feels weird. I don't know how to structure the content for helping somebody out like that. Also, like, it's just so personal. And I feel like whenever you have a following, so many people dismiss your problems because they just think that you don't have any. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that I could talk about, but I've had very personal things about me hit the internet without my permission. And I didn't get any empathy from anybody and and so why would i want to do it on purpose you know whenever things have hit the internet that 
were completely out of my control and you're just getting attacked and getting attacked and getting attacked so then when people also attack you for like not being real you're like well every time I try to share something that is personal and deep and like actually hurts me like people completely dismiss it Mm -hmm. you know they're like oh you you know you're conventionally attractive so you must not have any problems oh oh you have a following oh you appear rich because I'm not posting myself in my pajamas every day yeah, you know what I mean like sure. like it's like there's this weird thing about having a following where people just don't understand that it's not your real everyday life it is parts of your life mm-hmm. it's not to say that it's not real but it's almost like your own reality show after doing reality TV, that's what I realized the most about social media is like the people that aren't doing the day in the life vlogs every single day, even even if they are doing the day in the life vlogs, it's still only 10% of a day. It's not actually the entire day. Yeah, like, I actually wanted to watch. ask you about that specifically. Um, like your time with reality TV. What what show was it that you did? Love Island. Okay. It's terrible. So I've actually never seen Love Island. So I probably don't have. Well, actually, that might be a good thing because yeah. then you can describe it to somebody that has no idea. I've not seen my season. I refuse to watch it okay. for legal reasons. I don't want to get sued. So I can say whatever I want because I've never seen it. I just know that, that the way people talk to me about it, that things... I think you told me a story out, about But I don't know what they actually showed or, dif- or didn't because I refuse to watch it so that I can say the things that I know in my experience. Okay. Well, so, let's hear it. So, well, I let's mean. Let's talk about whatever you want. They really just leave out so much and edit days out of order, apparently. Okay. okay. Allegedly. Okay. <laughs> Boombastic side I eye. just like put an asterisk on I the just, video. I know that you can only show so much in a 45 minute episode and people take it like that's the full day. Yeah. Like as if all the things they saw on camera, if, if we weren't on camera, like we're just over here, like little Sims characters just bouncing from side to side, not interacting with each other. Like there's no other conversations or anything like that. So it just made me really sad because production really gets you to trust them. And I'm a very trusting person with being so fucking ADHD. I'm like a fucking golden retriever. I went in there and gave them my all and was like, (laughs) just poured my fucking heart out. And they just didn't care. They didn't care about who I actually was attracted to. So like I'm a, during bullying outside the show for going after certain people yeah. that I wasn't actually going after that that they made it look like I was going after it's like to fit the narrative oh yeah they did not care at all about I I was actually like in casting for seven months and for seven months straight they questioned me about my sexuality like I was you know very pansexual presenting on tiktok very into women i even told them like i don't really like guys like i don't really know if you are going to be able to find somebody for me on there i'm very personality based but also like if you want to know the physical features here's this they kept asking me like what would you do if if you liked a girl and i was like the same shit i would do if i liked a guy like it's really not rocket science okay and um then i finally get on there and i I'm in the villa. I take a look around the room. Everybody's obviously attractive, but I'm somebody who will know right off the bat from talking to somebody if I'm interested in them or not. Took a look around the room, said hi to everybody, and I was like, no. There was a girl in there. Her name was Genevieve. She was my best friend on the show. And um, I had the fattest crush on her. Okay. And tried to pull her aside to talk to her. It's called pulling them for a chat. Okay. And I'm in the middle of talking to her. And like, getting my fillers out there and they literally called me on the intercom they were like leslie um come to the foyer we need to talk to you and then they pulled me in then there and they were like um we're we're so proud of your sexuality like we're proud that like you're proud but we really need you to focus on the guys and i was like so you brought me on here as your token gay girl they posted i know they posted a video of me making out with a girl but i wasn't allowed to actually pursue a girl and then whenever they were questioned about it afterwards, not even just about me, just about the possibility of having queer relationships, they said it was logistically difficult, which is bullshit because they have 25 people sitting in the hotel room that never even make it onto the show. 25 guys and girls that if I were to couple up with a girl and then they need another girl to go with a guy or whatever, they could they easily, have they have them on deck. 
that's literally that's what the show was for like like that's how they put it out for any guy or any girl that goes home whether they be sent home like me or or they get voted out or whatever they have all of the tools because the show has no real like plot yeah like they just have to make it up as they go especially if they run into situations where like they like, see something that's entertaining and they're like all right we gotta yeah roll this. like our season was the season that had the most people go home unexpectedly in comparison to like anything in love island history like one person had a family member pass away and then the girl that he was coupled up with went with him um i got sent home for weed and then another guy went home for like a family emergency okay and well, are so, you able to talk about that at all I had a dab pen and I was smoking everybody out. Really? Yeah. Wait, like other people too? You're... I was going under the bed covers at night and smoking people out because that's how I get to know people. So and... like everyone that wanted to smoke, you were hooking them up. That's amazing. Yeah. I probably had like four people smoke with me. I, re- I remember um, sharing a bed with Josh, who's like this really like great fitness and health guy. And he's just like, he was in a couple. You just have to share a bed with whoever you're coupled up with. Um, okay. that night, I don't even think him, we, we weren't even coupled up. I don't know why we had to share a bed together that night, but we did. And, um, and I just remember he's, he's such like a, I don't want to say goody two shoes in a way that makes him sound like vanilla. Cause he's not, Okay. but he follows the rules, okay. you know, and I pull the covers and my pen just like, it's dark in there. Right. It just lights up. And you know, the emojis where it's like, I lips, I, yeah yeah like, yeah yeah as soon as the light lit up he was like and i was like <laughs> oh i'm scaring this man because like i came in there like a fucking wrecking ball like all these other i would say the og cast were like these really good girls that had like really good morals and were really looking for a husband and me i came in there with no expectations okay. i was like if they find my soulmate i'm all about it because yeah. whenever i find somebody i'm i'm into i'm all in but yeah. if not i'm completely out and so like i came in there took a little gander got shut down for being gay <laughs> and then they were like um i was like okay well i'm just gonna have fun like for me this is the first time in five years that i've had a break I have, you know, being on the content grind, it's an all day, every day job. People don't realize that it is tedious and you get no days off. Yeah. You know, and even on your day off, you're probably scrolling on the internet looking for content ideas and you're probably so stressed out about deadlines and like you just never really know where your money's going to come from. And although it, it creates a lot of opportunity, it is like a little debilitating. So I was having the time of my life i was like i just got five girlfriends and five new boyfriends everybody gets to make out all the time and it's not frowned (laughs) upon and i'm in a swimsuit on a beach getting paid to be here and this is the best time of my life i would say casa more was really really fun there was like no rules i would say whenever we got back into the villa and all the original girls came in that's when all the drama came in not to say that they're drama it's just that it was like everybody kind of already had their relationships and they were at a point where like production's putting hella pressure on everybody and they're fucking up their relationships and whatever. So, okay. So it was just a little more stressful. Like I, I had to be on eggshells, you know, whenever, whenever it was Casa more, nobody was taking it seriously because we were like, ah, nobody in here is for each other, but let's fucking party. Yeah. So like Casa more was a big party. So that was, that was really, really fun. That's cool. So, and then there was also like no pressure from production until the girls came back, and then they wanted us to like be penned against. I wish I was more familiar with the show, so I knew. It's okay. I'll tell you. Everything. I I've only seen uh, I've only seen. <laughs> I missed my mouth, dude. It's okay. It's honestly not a great show. When I was uh, super random, but when I was thinking earlier um, about how we met, I couldn't. <laughs> we were talking about fitness for some reason i was thinking about the one time we got like flaming hot cheetos from ralph's oh, with cheese? and put like cheese everywhere and just oh, like it's... drunk as fuck <laughs> oh yeah yeah i put them on that like san antonio snack vibe yeah yeah, yeah that, that shit's gas texture can of life no that's from san antonio oh, let me tell you yeah. i didn't have a drop of flavor until i moved to san antonio i was like oh my god there's things out there more than salt and pepper that's crazy <laughs> i keep tahini in my car now like i lived in san antonio for three years and that is 
that's flavor town right there yeah yeah dude i've been I've, once i thought it was really cool i was like 94 pounds all through high school and college cheer and then i moved to san antonio for like four months being there i come back home after dating like i've been dating this mexican boy okay. and we his family fed me so yeah, good I was gonna, he his sucked, family put you on but huh? they fed me so well and i come <laughs> home and funny. i remember i'm like walking past my family doing something and they're like where did that ass come from and i was like <laughs> tortillas with every meal tortillas and beans <laughs> all the time corn and beans corn and beans oh my god such good food there so yeah that's my favorite food speaking food. of um putting on an ass <laughs> uh getting back into fitness and adhd let's go there um a big reason why i started working out was because i had a flat ass and i didn't want to have a flat ass anymore and I was always very, very active and I stopped being active for like two years and was just smoking hella weed and just did not like where I was at in life as much anymore. I was like, I just feel a little stuck. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there could be something I could be doing. Like I was always so active growing up. Like I was a gymnast, a college cheerleader, competitive cheerleader. Like my mom was my coach. So like really was in the shits. And then, yeah, I've just always done really active things. So I started to get back into it and on my journey I realized whenever I started bulking and really started taking nutrition seriously that my ADHD was a lot more manageable yeah yeah like I don't take medication I haven't taken medication since I was in high school I like boycotted it I knew that it was wrong what did you what did you take no get no I did I actually did take medicine again like a few years ago but um, okay. I was on a few different, like, medications. They they kept switching me around. I know that I was started on Concerta. It was like a little purple mm-hmm. pill. It was like yeah. 27 milligrams of Concerta, okay. I think, was the first thing I took in the sixth grade. And then I remember in the seventh grade, I remember my mom going to the doctor and being like, this shit doesn't work. She is bouncing off the fucking walls. <laughs> like, tranquilize this Yeah, bitch. Concerta's like crack. <laughs> They upped my medication from 27 to 57, and they were like, it's just going to take a week to adjust her. They said the same shit to me. Same shit. Same I, shit. Now that I've done cocaine, <laughs> I love that. there's no difference. They're really, it, it, they're like, they're both. Yeah, except that's just stimulant. last for eight hours. <laughs> oh my God. It was the worst. I, I, it created a stimulant in my brain. If I'm remembering this correctly, like if you're somebody out there watching this that knows better medical terms, this is what I'm remembering from junior high. They said it created a stimulant in my brain and I couldn't control my emotions. I would literally walk around crying all day. I got expelled from school because I threw a chair at Randall Oaks because we were in band and we were supposed to be practicing on our own and he was playing this one part from the tuba over and over again. And if you're somebody who's aware of ADHD... Or maybe not. I can teach you a little something. We get very overstimulated by light and sound. And that's a neurodivergent thing. That's, you know, people with autism, anybody on the spectrum in that sense Mm -hmm. can be very overstimulated by light and sound. And I kept hearing him play this one part over and over again. Well, I was telling him, I was like, stop playing that part. And then he didn't listen to me. Bro, I fucking raged and picked up this chair and threw it at him. They were like, that bitch has anger problems. And it was the medication. Like, I literally, it was partly ADHD, partly me. <laughs> but the medications was like, well, sent totally me off not. the cliff, man. Like, it was the most humiliating week of my life. I remember yeah. we had a cheer meeting in my, like. And this was on Concerta? Yes. This yeah. was whenever they jacked me up to 57 milligrams. That week was the most embarrassing week because I, you know how, like, like whenever you're on a stimulant, if you're on drugs of any sort, like of like cocaine or anything like that, and you're talking 90 to nothing and you're like pouring your heart out, like if you've ever done Molly or something like that, that's what it felt like. Like now that I'm an adult and I've like done drugs, like party drugs like that, like I knew something was wrong. Like I kept telling my parents that I didn't want to take it and they just thought I was being defiant. And I've mm-hmm. tried to talk to my parents about this since I've been older and my mom like completely snapped and like i haven't talked to her since and like but we go in and out of like not talking yeah it's it's really crazy like 
Well, I'm sure we, we definitely have like some differences, but um, when I was younger, I was like fourth, fifth grade. That's when I was like diagnosed with ADD. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like I'm not super familiar of like the specific differences, whether or not I fall into one or both. I'm not sure, yeah. but I... I took Concerta. I, the first thing I took was Ritalin. Mm-hmm. Then I took something else. And then I took Concerta. Hated all of them. They made me feel like miserable. Like miserable. Like irritable as fuck. I felt yes. like no... Well, how you felt like angry, I guess I would get that way too. But I also would just feel like no emotion. Like I would yes. turn into like a You'd robot. Feel like a zombie. I would turn into like a literally as like a cracked out zombie. Well, it's kind of like... Like I would like mindlessly do shit. But like... It did change my GPA like sophomore year when yeah. I started taking like, my Concerta, grades are high, but my mood my is grades went from I had like a 1.9 GPA and I ended up getting a 3.95 like as soon as I went on it because like, you know me like I'm I'm kind of a geek like I, yeah. I'm smart when I apply myself, but when I'm not applying myself and getting distracted like I didn't get a lot done, but I said I say all of this because like as a kid. I had the same situation with Concerta where they're like, all right, we're going to start you for me. They started me on like 18 and then they moved me up to 36 and then like, and then we're going to move you up to like 54. And I'm like, I feel like a crackhead on 36. And they're like, no, you just need to get used to it. Like they told me the same shit. And like all my other friends were on like 54 or 60 or whatever. And so they bumped me up, but I just felt awful. And now I think about like, not proud of it but like I vaped for years and I think about like all the times I just constantly was like hitting something that was affecting my central nervous system Mm -hmm. and just like stimulating me constantly and now think about like the millions of kids that are taking Adderall or these stimulants every day you know like there's what I was trying to talk to you about the other day where we paused it because we want to talk about on here was the fact that there's a lot of studies that are coming out right now about dyes in food and like the amount of sugar intake and basically like you know it's it's giving the same symptoms as ADHD so there's a lot of kids being wrongfully diagnosed as ADD and ADHD which the difference is hyperactivity so attention deficit disorder is ADD Mm -hmm. and then attention deficit hyperactive disorder Mm -hmm. so I have ADHD you have ADD Mm -hmm. so you may just not have the hyperactivity Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically the same symptoms Um, and yeah, so basically kids are getting wrongfully diagnosed and then they're being put on all these pills. And to me, like, I yeah, I don't want to shame any parents because I know that it is really, really hard to have a kid with ADHD because I saw what my parents went through. And like I said, like, I tried to talk to my mom about it. I wasn't trying to shame her. I was trying to tell her my experience because... Mm-hmm. I stopped taking medication in high school because I was boycotting it. My parents would line me up every morning, given my parents were prison guards, like in an actual prison, and they would line me up and make me take my medication in front of them and then check my mouth and make sure it was not in there because I told my sister I was hiding it in the back of like my teeth back here. I was hiding it so I wouldn't have to take it. I hated it. Kids are intuitive. They know... They know more about their bodies than you know about their bodies. And I I hate that growing up in the South that we're taught differently. Like, you should listen to your kids. I kept telling my mom that something was wrong and that I I didn't like the medication. And I know that she was just at her wit's end with me because, you know, I had eight kids in each household. Mm -hmm. You know, I was one of 16 and I was the most complicated child. Like, I was the neediest for attention and, you know, like, I needed to be emotionally stimulated constantly and... I know it was a lot, so I don't blame her for it. I just wish she would listen to me. And where I stopped taking medication is that I took all my medication to school and traded it for pizza. I was That's like, incredible. I wish I would have sold it. Now I know. that I you would have made money now. I had patches at that time. They have the they're almost like caffeine patches. Um, but they literally would rub my skin raw. I would have to shave my stomach. You could either put them on your lower like, back or on your lower like stomach. Like Adderall patches? Mm-hmm. or It was called Daytrana. I've never heard of that. They would burn the shit out of my skin. My skin would be raw, but I would still have to put one on every single that day. That fucking terrible. It was terrible, but I took it to school. I told these guys that I went to school with, Hunter Bell and Jake Warraven. I was like, Hunter, have your mom call me in a pizza. 
and I'll give you this box. And they stuck them all over themselves. A drug dealer was born that day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a good drug dealer. I'll just give it to you because I just want you to have a good time. But like literally you're just I a drug giver these guys put them all over yes i'm just a drug giver <laughs> they put them all over their stomach and all over their arms and then they came up to me like hours later and they're like now we know why you're smiling all the time like they were cracked out essentially like it was just terrible but but i remember like i got like kicked out of my house and everything because of it because i wouldn't take the medication and then a few years ago, whenever I left that content house, I was so just my brain was in the fucking gutter from how terrible I was treated. They had me so convinced that everything in the world was wrong with me. So I was like, I just need to get on medication. I was so depressed, you know, so, so, mm -hmm. so fucking depressed, which is like essentially ADHD is like being chronically overwhelmed. We have very low dopamine. So the hyperactivity in our you know like constantly needing to be stimulated is mm -hmm. our body seeking out dopamine yeah um we have really high levels of cortisol and very low levels of dopamine so so the reason why you can't do tasks that you don't want to do but why you can hyper focus on the things that you love is because it gives you dopamine and the other things don't yeah so it's really crazy how striking that difference is mm -hmm. and it's like it's it's tough because like a lot of times i like rag myself out for it where i'm like no it's just me like having bad habits and like i need to work harder and like i'm like inferior to like it's these so other terrible. people and it's uh and it does get the best to me a lot and it, it's something that when you like just even you bringing some of that stuff up the other day, I was like, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot that I ever, like, I, I've been this way for a long fucking time. It's like, it's debilitating because it's like, especially if you're, with being ADHD, like, you're a perfectionist. But yeah. you will never feel like you're perfect because, like, you can spend eight hours making music because you love it, but you're not going to do the dishes for two weeks until they get flies because it's, it doesn't give you immediate dopamine. Yeah. You know, for sure. it's like, it's the saddest thing because it's like you, it's like that having all the, <laughs> all the, that shit hurt. Didn't it? I was like, wow. I know. I know it, that shit. It stings because it's like, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll have people on TikTok like see that there's like a pile of clothes in the back of my, thing and they'll be like you're fucking disgusting like clean your house and i'm like i want to i really want to but i'm gonna sit here and think about it until my mind is in the fucking gutter yeah, that's why i have a maid now. weeks later <laughs> it you know and i've been thinking about it like if i got a maid my my i think my mental health would be a little better because it would take a little something extra off my plate yeah um and and just waking up in a clean environment would be nice yeah. because some days i wake up and i just look around the room i just and get like so unnecessarily mentally stressed about dumb shit like that well, it's like and that's why i like to have somebody else do it which like probably just sounds like a lazy cop out it's not though i fucking hate when people think that adhd it's hard not to feel lazy. that way though you know? it is because well well it's like you're paralyzed you can sit here and be scrolling on your phone but really what's going on in your head is like it's almost like having an office full of people it's like one person standing up and being like we're gonna go fold the clothes and then somebody stands up and they're like actually we should do the dishes and then another person stands up and they're like but what about working out <laughs> and then another person stands up and then they're like record music <laughs> <laughs> yes everybody's screaming at each other so then you're just sitting there it's ADHD is a. Have you uh, seen that in that movie Inside Out? The the, the no. animated. Oh dang. No. Dang. What is that about? Basically that, <laughs> in a nutshell, in an animated. Nobody movie. bullies you more than your own brain as an ADHD person. It fucking sucks. Yeah. It's um, oh, fuck. What are the words? It. It's an executive function disorder. It's okay. knowing that you have all the puzzle pieces, but not knowing what the fuck the puzzle is. So, so we're, like, we're bad self start? CEOs. So, huh? We're bad self CEOs. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, I would say like my biggest advice for it is starting your day with something that's going to give you dopamine. So like an easy task mm -hmm. that, that like 
you know, maybe like, okay, putting on your shoes. If you put your shoes on, you're going to get more done. Like if you lay out an outfit next to your bed, especially on a day that you have a lot of things to do, if you just wake up and put on that outfit and put on your shoes, for whatever reason, you can get more things done. And it's almost like you, it, it feels like a little bit of an accomplishment because for me, like, especially like, being a girl and having a little bit more complicated of a wardrobe knowing that athleisure exists has changed my life like yeah, having all I wear. having the gym gym aesthetic it's so much easier than everyday clothes because i can wake up and put on a one piece and know that i'm going to wear the same kind of socks and the same shoes and and it just takes so much more stress off my plate you know so um the gym has helped me a lot with my brain um especially down to the eating like like i said earlier i have a really hard time gaining weight Mm -hmm. uh doing this bulk has completely changed like so for people that like day to day for me struggle to get in like calories because you said you're bulking and like it's you've Mm -hmm. struggled to like gain weight what are what have you mostly been eating that's been helping you hit that i would say you know, people with ADHD have a hyper fixation food. Have fun every week. Go ham on that hyper fixation food. Just make sure it has a lot of protein in it. So the week that I noticed the biggest gains for me was I was hyper fixated on these salmon protein bowls. And it's just brown rice. I put, a, get an air fryer. An air fryer makes your life so much easier. <laughs> Meal prep your rice for the week. That's easy to do in one sitting. Meal okay. prep it, put that aside. And then make the stuff that goes around it. You can also do that with pastas. Um, And, like, just put that aside. You know, keep it separate. Um, But air fry salmon in, like, little little nugget bites. And then I put teriyaki sauce, stir-fry sauce on it, avocado. And it was so good. And I just ate that for, like, a week straight, like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then I kind of get excited for what my next hyperfixation meal is. There's, like, something to look forward to. Um, last week it was charcuterie for whatever reason. That's all I would eat was charcuterie. So then I just went to Trader Joe's. I got a bunch of like, um, anchovies, mozzarella actually has a lot of protein in it. Okay. So I got like mozzarella. I got hummus. Hummus has like a lot of protein in it. Um, I got a bunch of different meats from the deli, a bunch of different cheeses. And I just like didn't punish myself for not wanting to eat something heavier. Like I just ate a lot of what I liked. Mm -hmm. And then also there are these protein bars that I really, really like the Bear Bell protein bars, the cookies and cream one. I've still never tried one actually. (gasps) I think I have one in my car. I'll gift it to you. It tastes like a Twix bar. Yeah. It says cookies and cream, but it tastes like Twix. I would just say nurture what you like. If there is like a specific protein that you like go ham on it you don't have to eat something different for every single meal yeah you know i think this week i'm really on to sweet potatoes so i'm just going ham with sweet potatoes i'm not bullying myself about it with adhd you are never going to be happy if you are constantly trying to change what your brain is trying to do Mm -hmm. you got to learn to go with the flow and be happy that it is where it is and Mm -hmm. just like learn to be grateful for it because like there are a lot of things that my brain can do that other people's brains can't do Mm -hmm. and so if i'm hyper fixated on a fucking salmon bowl that's gonna give me the fattest ass in the world (laughs) i'm okay with eating that breakfast lunch and dinner for whatever reason this week so i'm just gonna go ham on it and just really nurture that yeah another thing that i started doing is i switched from a normal protein powder to a mass gainer protein powder and started taking creatine every day okay and just mixing it in creative ways so like i'll either put creatine in my coffee or in orange juice or in like i'll mix it with greens and a little bit of um pre-workout before the gym super easy but i started noticing the difference with those two things the big difference with the mass gainer the mass gainer protein powder really helped me i've put on like eight pounds in the last month and a half since i started taking it oh shit which is great for me i don't gain weight you know i told that to austin he was like i gained that this week it's dense yeah a lot of people don't like him because they feel like they're too thick like, I've been hearing a lot of people, like, everyone other than you recently has been like, oh, I hate my mass gainer. I think it's like, first of all, it's going to be the brand that you buy. And, yeah, for sure. And that then also difference. how you make it. Like, I only drink it at night. 
Okay. Before bed. And I'll put chocolate ice cream in it. Okay. And do it with oat milk instead of water because why would you do it okay. with water? You it's said make gross. this shit dense. Yeah. Well, mine's not like super thick. Sometimes I don't do the full two scoops. Okay. I do whatever tastes good. Oh, throw in a little bit of cottage cheese. Yeah. Um, That's one I've of the been... hidden secrets of the fitness yes, industry. Yes. Yes. I love cottage cheese. And honestly, it makes it way creamier and it, it has like that kind of like like salty sweet yeah. like savory kind of make it fun make food fun for yourself yeah. you're not gonna fucking eat because people with adhd for whatever reason will look up and it's eight o'clock at night and they haven't eaten yeah and if like you hear cottage cheese and you're like you think that's gross right you think but that's disgusting so i'll never forget like i had the same reaction i think when i was like 17 or 18 i heard about it for my first time and like a shake and i'm like cheese in a shit what like yeah. what is wrong with you even avocados and then i realized it kind of has like the same effect as like greek yogurt it makes mm -hmm. it thicker but it's cheaper it has more protein um yeah i mean that's basically it I had to but... buy austin his own tub because i taught him to make just like cottage cheese toast with honey yeah and now he's obsessed with it and he comes to my house every time he knows i buy groceries so i had to get one and put his name on it i was like do not eat my cottage cheese I need this to get a You gotta admit, ass. though, like, though the name cottage cheese. Sounds fucking It sounds feral. fucking gross. It sounds <laughs> like foul. Cottage cheese. Just, like, there's just that does not, can never sound oh, good. It sounds so nasty, but it's actually so good. Like, I I will, I put that on my charcuterie just board think with a little bit of honey on it. it. Well, like, I, I eat it with, like, pita and honey and, like, salami. Okay. It's actually you so good. You got the full good. little charcuterie treatment. Yeah, that was what I was hyper fixated on last week. So I was like, fuck it. Guess we're eating nothing but charcuterie for breakfast, lunch, <laughs> and dinner. I That's ate a, probably a million olives that have zero nutritional value. I was like, why can't I fixate on something that has like what I need in it? But whatever. Um, oh, another thing that I switched over from instead of having so many chocolate protein shakes, I found these um, yogurt drinks that have like very 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 little sugar in them okay but 20 grams of protein okay and it's yogurt that and they're good. fucking awesome i found them on like like instacart and i've been going ham with those they're a little bit easier to drink um i would say that if you don't like your mass gain or protein being so thick thin it out break it up into like different yeah. like like you can make it as thin as you want i don't measure out Half anything those that have it twice a day i don't know just right? don't make it miserable. Find a way to like it. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of people think that you have to just eat chicken and rice and broccoli. If you're trying to create a, a habit out of something you don't like, you're never going to like it. Like a watered down protein shake. Why would you do that? You can yeah. literally like substitute anything else in yeah. it. Make it fun. Like you can make a vanilla one and then also throw like some cinnamon in there. And like, like I don't know, get on Pinterest. Pinterest is like the best place for ev like. I don't know why people don't use Pinterest more as a search engine, but I do because there's people on there like making the recipes and stuff all the time. Yeah. Like that. Like I go shit. to it for yeah. anything. Like there's, it's all free. Like I, I will find say my best though, so like there. I'm somebody that like firmly believes I'm like, don't spend money where you don't need to. Like there's so many supplements that are like over marketed or over promising, like a good protein, like, I would say if you can work out without pre-workout, you don't even need it. But like I yeah. take pre, a solid protein, creatine is always a great option. But like that's all you really need. Yeah, like yeah. Like it is. Like yeah, mass gainer, that can be cool too if, if you're really trying to like gain weight and you need mm -hmm. the calories in. But I will say if you do pay for it, like if, if you've had whey protein before and you're like this is disgusting, I don't want to touch it again, like keep trying different brands yeah. because like – there is a difference. I've tried. There's a very clear difference. Whenever I first started, I was taking like a pea protein. First of all, that made me smell like shit. Yeah. I will never take pre pea protein that again. It sounds like it smells like shit. It was like a <laughs> vegan protein powder that my trainer put me on. And I have never had stinky armpits in my life until I... I literally finished the whole thing. And then I switched over to a whey one just because like my Instacart person messed up which was so great because then I didn't stink anymore. It was just like my first month in the gym and I was like, I'm just a stinky bean. And then I switched and I was like, it, it was like, it's terrible. My genetics. It was the first month that I met Austin too. And I was like, I smell foul right now. It was terrible. <laughs> Every part of me stunk, bro. I was like, this shit's gross. I was like, but this is the name of the game. I'm trying to get an ass. You said I didn't no notice. pain, no gain. I didn't notice anything. I didn't even start gaining weight 
through this whole last year until I switched to a pea protein or until till I switched to the mass gainer protein powder, yeah. which for me, I have an extremely high metabolism. So it was necessary for me. But even me, I like it's two scoops for 57 grams of protein. OK, I only do one scoop and I and I traded out the water for oat milk and then I add in like a fucking giant scoop of cottage cheese and I'm fine with that. I Like I said, I don't I try not to think too hard about it. I just pay attention to how it affects my body and then just keep doing whatever is good there. So the two things I noticed is the cottage cheese is really helping and salmon. My body really, really reacts well to salmon. Um, Also, you shouldn't be taking everything that people post online and everything that your trainer says at face value. And it's not to shoot down trainers or anything. It's that you don't know what your body needs you should like consider it and you should definitely try it but you should be like kind of researching your own body while you're doing all this stuff i i've had now that's not to say that there aren't trainers out there that can do everything for you like there there are like a lot of trainers out there that can really give you the keys to the body that you want but i've also had trainers that like i sure hope so There's some that are great at what they do, but there's also a lot of people, I would say LA specifically, of people selling their genetics because there are trainers that I watch and I, I see them post and like- Oh, there's so much bullshit in the industry. There's yeah, so much first bullshit. of all, I've known them for years and I know the surgeries that they have. Yeah. And second of all, their form is terrible. And yeah. I'm like, how are you getting away with posting this? As the, a amount of, the amount of girls with BBLs giving like leg workout guides. I'm like, are you this? You got to be Shit fucking kidding me. me off. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then also like there was a trainer that I had for a while where after I started getting in the gym by myself and kind of like seeing what my body responds to her workout stopped working for me. And okay. and I would go in the gym and I was like. In the last time I worked out with her, I literally left and went and worked out on my own afterwards because yeah. it was such a bad workout. Yeah. I was like, like n- everything she was doing, I was like having to kind of correct her. And it wasn't to say that she's like a bad trainer. She just had such a different body type than me that it doesn't work for me. So I would say if you're picking a trainer, pick somebody that has come from the body that you're starting with and, you know, the body that they have now is the body that you're wanting so that like somebody who has a similar journey as you Mm -hmm. i feel like is the most appropriate because there are a lot of people that come to me that are asking me about weight loss and i'm like i can't help you there i've never had to do that so i have no information to give you but i am going through a very successful bulk right now and seeing the results that i want so i can help you with that but i'm not going to tell you how to lose weight because i don't fucking know how to do that (laughs) um other than by not you know, like just being a super stressed ADHD person, not taking care of myself, I'll drop weight like that. Yeah. But I'm like the in the most. I'm like stress, eat, eat everything in sight. Yeah. Dude, I had to slow down on smoking weed. I was like losing my appetite. Um, is you smoking know? weed with ADD too, I feel like is, is extra tough, at least for me. Like some people can like smoke weed and be productive. I am. I, I don't saw, know if that like applies for everybody with ADD, but like for me, what I smoke, I am not productive. You know, there I enjoy was it, but I'm a not while productive. where I was more productive with weed because it was slowing down my brain enough to where I could concentrate on like one thing and get it done. I was like burp. <laughs> doing a really good job of of being productive. And then I think I was just depressed at where I was at in life. But I saw a thing earlier today, actually, that was saying, like, you can be successful and smoke weed, but you shouldn't smoke weed until you are successful because smoking weed helps you feel comfortable with where you're at. So it's like then you stop pushing past where you're at in life because you feel good and comfortable. But at the end of the day, like, you're going to be overwhelmed whenever you're not high and then you're going to smoke again and then you're going to be not overwhelmed anymore and then you're just going to continue that pattern of being like shit i'm overwhelmed because i know i'm not doing the things i'm supposed to and then that's kind of where the spiral goes to being lazy so you have to be disciplined whenever you're smoking weed if you're not a disciplined person and you're just smoking weed then that's where it starts getting a little out of hand it's not to say that like you know if you smoke weed you're going to be unsuccessful because that's just completely not true um i think it just 
elevates who you already are. Yeah. So, yeah. I And, like, I don't know. I just, I had to start slowing myself down and just smoking at night. Okay. So, because I got to a point where I think I was just really unhappy where I was at in life. You know, I was just doing OnlyFans. I wasn't doing anything that, you know, really gave me value. Yeah. And I hated that. And all I was doing was smoking weed all day long. Smoking weed and just, like, eating like shit and not taking care of myself. (laughs) Also found out that I had, like, I have PMDD, which is uh, premenstrual dysphoria disorder, which is basically I have, like, really crazy hormones around my period. Which goes hand in hand with ADHD because having ADHD, I have really low dopamine and really high cortisol. And basically, PMDD is just really heightened hormones and it raises the shit out of your cortisol. And there is no cure for it, but you can kind of like muffle your symptoms by working out, eating really healthy, and basically balancing your gut health. So like you're, a lot of things would like, you know with ADHD and PMDD and how you feel it's all chemicals in your brain Mm -hmm. so if you can learn how to detect when there's too much of a certain chemical and when you need the good chemical versus the bad chemical and what to do to gain that good chemical and like soften the bad one then like you can do so much more with your life and so it's like it can come down to eating how you're spending your days how much blue light you're intaking Mm -hmm. and like how much you're moving your body and what what is like feeding your soul that day and it's just like yeah so like i ended up getting another job aside from OnlyFans, and i plan to quit OnlyFans at the end of the summer i'm so excited i've been on it since 2018 i'm a fucking og on there (laughs) um but i'm just really burnt out because you know there's so many managements now i've had like I had a management really fuck me over during the holidays, like just going behind my back and pretending to be me and doing shit they weren't supposed to be doing while I was with my family and not paying attention to my account. Um, And that burnt me out. And that was really what sent me to being like, I want to take back my narrative and do something that I really like. So now I work for a fashion brand and shoot all their content. And even just doing that, you know, they are definitely not making a lot of money from it, but I love it. Well, it gives you a sense of, like, purpose and value. Yes. And I think that's, like, a, what a lot of people struggle with with, like, OnlyFans. And, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I I totally get it. I think it's, like, obviously the money for a lot of people yeah. is really good. Um, but as soon as you're, like, making all that money, it's, like, oh, now what do I do with, like, my life and my time? Well, and then you're so used to having these big things of money come in. Like, I was at a point where I was making, like, 10 grand a day. That's insane. And not touching my account i was just sending in the content and doing like these um like live stream videos and stuff like that which were really fun for like a hot second and you know thankfully i'm somebody that used all my money to travel the world and i'm glad that i did that so Mm -hmm. like i don't have any regrets with it but i'm just so over that phase of my life especially because there's so many people that feel entitled to my body and i hate that Mm -hmm. like i'm not as nice as I appear on this live stream right now. Like I can't stand somebody telling me what to do and I will be the biggest cunt in the world. If you think that you (laughs) can tell me what to do, I refuse to listen to authority unless I believe that that authority is doing something nice to me. You know what I mean? I feel like anybody could be like that. However, just I, um, and I think like out of context, I think to some people when they hear that, Mm -hmm. like it's hard, it's like easy for them to be like, Oh, like easy for them to say, or like, oh, she's pretty, or or whatever. Um, but I, I don't think people understand that. Like, yes, the money is great, mm-hmm. but like, I don't want to say like demeaning or dumbing yourself down, but like, when all you're appealing to is like the way you look to somebody, or like them having control over you, it's a terrible feeling. My goal was to keep my personality at the forefront, but you know sometimes you just fall off with the communication or you just fall off with like you know leaving certain parts of the story out and I do have people on my OnlyFans that have been supporting me for years like I even have people that I've like sent gifts Mm -hmm. to for like birthdays like there's couples that I talk to on there that are so nice and so respectful like I really do have people on there that are supporting me Mm -hmm. that's awesome but 
the biggest difference that I noticed in OnlyFans was whenever it popped off and like all these girls got on there and they weren't actually on there. Their management was on there and, and it's just, they're very robotic and it's not their personality at all. So then like, you know, before these managements came around that, you know, are supposed to help me monetize, I, you know, you had to pay to get onto my page. Like I had a subscription Mm -hmm. and I think that was my favorite time that my OnlyFans was because you like it really filtered out the people that didn't have any good intentions towards me so instead of somebody yelling at me being like where's your asshole and I'm like first of all I'm not a porn star I've never presented myself as a porn star I'm completely open and honest whenever I like you promote my OnlyFans I'm always like you will never ever ever see me fucking on here you will never see me fully nude like it's just not gonna happen like I'm definitely a free the titty type of girl but like like you set the standard that yes that you want to be and the biggest issue was that I had these managements go behind my back and put out a completely different narrative like I had a management during the holidays doing dick ratings sexting people pretending to be me telling these people I like like literally sexting with people as if they were me and I had to go into my own account and be like guys this was not me like that that wasn't me and I'm so sorry yeah and then I just did a bunch of free live streams for like three months and burnt myself out and now I just have like a really hard time logging on and I still do it because like I need the money but I really enjoy where I'm at with this other company they tried to give me a raise like three months in already and I was like no like I'm not going to accept it right now because I want you to double that in a month and a half whenever I do more work and it's like honestly it's so addicting because it's like the first time I've ever had a job that I love like I went from like all these rinky dink jobs that I didn't believe in this is the first job like I kind of manifested it there was like a point in my life where I was like I wish I could just organize photo shoots like that would be so much fun like that's something I really want to do and um like I would be really good at it I have like a lot of really good content ideas and I think I love the fact that I'm not at the forefront of it. I get to just be creative. And they, like, I just, I reached out to a friend one day and was just like, hey, do you have any small creators I could manage? Like, I'm just bored. I have a lot of free time on my hands and I want to be making more money in that free time. And she was like, I think I have something better for you. And then she sends me this fashion brand. They're, like, wholesale to Nordstrom, Urban Outfitters, like, like 100 different brands all known and whatever but they as their own brand just don't have like a big account Mm -hmm. and they're like they just need somebody to run their instagram account and then i come in there and they put so much trust and faith in me right off the bat and really just like believed in me and we're just like yeah dude like whatever you want to do and i think as like as somebody with adhd i have never kept a job for longer than three months nor have i ever wanted to past a month and a half <laughs> so i get and in so there props to you then i'm like, i love this job and like they really are so great to me even though the pay is like not something i'm used to i think it's like really healthy for me because i've not had like a healthy mindset towards income for mm-hmm. like you know i went from stripping to you know getting these really high dollar brand deals to having an OnlyFans where I'm making so much money and really putting in like very little effort which there are OnlyFans girls that put in a lot of effort and like that's not to say that it's just totally a lazy job because it's not like people don't understand like it is such a mental job it's like naked therapy for people that you know they just want to take and take and take and take and take from you all day long and whenever it's thousands of people dming you wanting your attention all day long like your social battery is just in the fucking dirt Mm -hmm. in the fucking dirt and then you got people mad at you being like well you didn't message me back there are thousands of people here that i need to message back you know and and it's just like it's just a lot like a lot of people wanting so much from you so like i said i always wanted to keep my personality at the forefront and then it just Like, I felt like my narrative kept being, like, stolen from me by these management companies because they just look at these girls, they look at all of us as just being disposable. Like, if there's, like, they're especially going after, like, really young girls that don't have, like, parental figures or, like, legit management in their life that just want to make money and whatever. And there are people that are, like, totally okay with that. But, like, there are a lot of girls that just have no idea what they're getting themselves into, especially because, like, I had three years before these management companies came around so i already Mm -hmm. knew the game and so it it was just really hard to get one past me yeah you know so the coffee's working yeah (laughs) no i i'm the coffee is a blessing i love coffee you know that coffee is like 
basically an ADHD person um, self-medicating. Like, it's a stimulant. Caffeine stimulates ADHD people in a completely different way than, like, you know, That's what I've been told, yeah. I didn't yeah. know if that was just, like, an old anecdote or if that it was actually true. No, it's true. It's true. Uh, caffeine kind of, like, does the same thing, just a lot more mild than, like, the crack that pharmaceuticals give you, yeah. you know? Um, I used to be allowed to drink Coke and like Mountain Dew in class because it would help me concentrate. Also peppermints. That's why I drank. I started drinking coffee in like third grade. Yeah. Probably why I'm five eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I didn't know my, my mom would give me coffee all the time too. But she thought like it was before I was um, diagnosed. She was giving it to me before like pageants and stuff to like make me really smiley and bubbly on stage. And then she found out I was ADHD and she was like, well, fuck. I've just been <laughs> medicating you, but all right. You know? Um, also like my parents used to have to put, um, the scratchy part of Velcro on my binders so I could sit and scratch it in class to like have a stimulant. Okay. Also bubbly drinks. That's are, like, funny. Cause like how you liked it, Velcro as a kid, I like fucking despised Velcro, Velcro and chalk. If I heard the sound of Velcro or like felt chalk or like saw chalk like being done oh on the God. street my brain would like freak out my brain oh my would be like God. stop it stop well, it stop probably it like one of those things that like like i have a really hard time with like house music and stuff sometimes like i have to be physically at a festival like okay with it being surround sound whatever i have to be in the mood for house music otherwise the repetitive noise will send me on a fucking spiral <laughs> i will go on a down i will get actively mad i'll start sweating it's all i can focus on it's yeah, like for sure it's like hyper fixation i can't like i have these so we're like being add is like we're always focused on the shit that bothers us oh my god i literally wear <laughs> can't um, pay attention to the things i need to yeah i wear noise canceling headphones in public all the time um because it's just it's too much with like the noises and the lights and the people and like there's so many things to look at and honestly just the pressure and the heat on my ears feels really good for whatever reason so like i have this friend who i love to death but she talks a lot we both talk a lot together but she likes to be really close to my face whenever okay. she talks and so if i'm walking she will literally turn her body and face me and so if i turn in a circle like away from her she will complete she will the rotation me. with you she will <laughs> orbit me and i love her i love this girl she is like the only person that does not piss me off whenever she does that kind of stuff i love her to death but i have to put headphones on and i'm like look it's not because i don't want to listen to you i can still hear you this just muffles it a little bit and also takes away all the further noises mm -hmm. so that i can just have this one because otherwise i will be on the verge of tears if if she's doing that i remember one time i was looking for a bathroom i was also trying to look for a specific like jacket i'm walking through like bloomingdale's about to piss my pants she's orbiting me while i'm trying to search for a bathroom <laughs> i love that and talking and i'm having to pay attention and i looked at her and i was like i'm gonna cry if you keep going just need to slow down for like a sec until i pee and then like it's not so many different things yelling at me yeah so that's a lot well well leslie hannah bell leslie golden what do you, what should we, what should we, how should we describe you? <sighs> what do you mean? In what way? What name? Yeah. What do you go by these days? Well, I go by Leslie unless I'm in Texas. If I hear Leslie in Texas, I know they only know me from social media. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Every, everybody else over there calls me Hannah. My family, really? like, they give you a lot of shit for going by Leslie over here. And I'm like, it truly was an accident. So. Well, we got to get in, uh, we got to get in another workout. I know. I know. I need a full body workout. Like I would like to have like a day where I go through like a full body something that just like tightens everything. Yeah. Especially like I would love to do that like two days before a photo shoot. Let's do like a back day or something. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. I have um I have a shoot for Titan on Saturday morning, so I'm gonna be going ham all week. I have a shoot tomorrow in like an abandoned pool, like a Ooh. massive abandoned pool. Nice. That's like out in the middle of nowhere that this photographer found. So. I'm excited, but I would like to get, like, I keep, like, putting off a lot of shoots because I'm, like, I want to be super duper in shape. Give me, like, two weeks, and then two I'm weeks goes so by, and I'm, like. I'm so like, oh, I was supposed to be ripped by now. <laughs> <laughs> no! I'm, like, fuck. I'm, like, well, how am I less ripped than I was two weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> it's the bulk, bro. Uh, the other day, God, I'm going to get a McDonald's little graphic. Cookie toe, fucking I've never right had, now. like, a little pudge before, but I've been kind of getting one. Oh, I'm a thick boy right now. <sighs> 
Austin looked at it and he was like, yeah, fat girl. And I was like, don't say that. <laughs> I was like, fuck. And then like you could just, you know, whenever your stomach sounds like a waterbed. For sure. Sometimes. A it's not, it was. I love how Southern. I was are. having sex and it sounded like a waterbed. And I was like, this is the most humbling experience of my life. I was like, fuck, man. And then I did uh, the stair climber for like 20 minutes the next morning. I was like, never again. <laughs> never again. So. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks You're for so chatting. welcome. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, we probably it? went way over time. Yeah, huh? I have no idea how long <laughs> we went, but I guess we'll find out. But yeah, thanks for coming. Of course. Thank You're you for You're not kicked me. out yet, but I'm going to end this. End this. You have so much to edit. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Show and tell. Leslie. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So. Till next time. Bye.